the shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. Having learned that Dr. Fu Manchu is concentrating on Pierre Delive for his next victim, Nalan Smith with Petrie and Kerrigan rushes to Paris, hoping to be in time to save the dictator. Delive has received the last warning from the Sea Fun, instructing him to destroy a certain military document. Smith fails to convince the great Delive of the Sea Fun's importance, and he insists that he remains with the dictator to await the fatal hour. Seated in a luxuriously furnished study, Delib tells Smith that the C. Fan has instructed him to turn the lights in the room on and off three times to signify that the orders have been carried out and the document has been destroyed. The dictator offers his guest a glass of wine and after proposing a toast, he suddenly grows rigid and falls to the floor. Smith, with lightning speed, turns the lights in the room on and off three times and seizing the document, he tears it to shreds. Suddenly, a small, dark form slithers across the floor to the window Kerrigan draws his pistol and... Kerrigan, don't shoot, you fool. For oh, heaven's sake, Smith, what was it? I don't know. But whatever it was, it was concealed in this room to murder Delib. But the voice, Nayland, someone called out. Yes, Petrie, I heard it. The speaker must have been in the garden below. But the thing we saw, Nayland... It's beyond me. The garden must be searched, but I doubt if anything will be found. But we must do something. Delib may be dead. He would have been dead, Kerrigan, if I hadn't saved him. I don't understand at all. I came here prepared to oppose Delib, Kerrigan. And the only way to save him and the world was to drug his wine. Ah, so that's why you wanted that prescription, Neon, eh? Yes, indeed. You've helped greatly to avert an international catastrophe. Ah, well, there's nothing to fear, Kerrigan. Delib will be insensible for 18 hours, but he'll not suffer any unpleasant after effects. And he won't be able to recall exactly what happened. Ring for the valet, Kerrigan. We'll report that the document was destroyed in our presence and that His Excellency was seized with a sudden heart attack. Well, having informed Marshal Brieu that Paris may sleep in peace, we can return to our hotel. Uh, why the bodyguard, Nayland? Oh, the police have an idea that I need protection. So the car ahead and one following us. Perhaps you do. Remember the sea fan gave you until 11 o'clock to leave Paris. Yes, I know. However, it's after 11 now. And I still haven't received the final notice. I'm wondering why you tore up that document, Nayland. <laughs> Looks as if I suddenly decided to work with Fu Manchu instead of against him. Well, if that document had been signed and delivered to its proper destination, no doubt the whole of Europe would have been plunged into another war. Oh, I realize that, but what is Fu Manchu's goal in murdering every military leader who chooses to disregard his warning? Remember, Petrie, when General Quinto was killed, Fu Manchu told us he wanted to preserve world peace. But that's a laudable ambition, Smith. Yes, it is. But can you imagine a world ruled by the Sea Fan? An organization headed by the greatest genius the world has ever known? But surely... Yes, Kerrigan, that's his ultimate goal. No matter how he cloaks his desires, I know that he's striving to rule the world. I know him so well, know his many characteristics. 
I shall never cease to hunt him until I'm absolutely certain that he's dead. Yes, Nayland, there's no other way. Until a short time ago, I was sure that he'd lost his power over the Sea Fan. Yet I doubt very much if he'd yield the presidency to anyone. Yes, but obviously you caused the leave to obey his instructions. I know I did, but in doing so, I interfered with the Sea Fan. That is a crime they'll never forget. Well, here we are. Thank you, Dupre. Not at all, monsieur. I've been instructed to remain with you while you're in Paris. Oh, that isn't necessary. Sorry, but those are my orders. Oh, by the way, this sudden illness, Monsieur Delib, is a dreadful thing. Oh, tell me. Were any orders issued for tonight? Orders? Well, I mean of a military nature. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, yes, Smith. At three minutes before midnight, the city will be plunged into darkness, and the air defenses will be tested under war conditions. Oh, I see. Oh, Kerrigan, where are you going? Excuse me a minute. Our daughter. Let me go. Please let me go. No, our daughter. Not this time. You're going to stay. Struggle with me, Bart. What? Call Mr. Smith. Do as I tell you. Someone is watching us. Smith! Oh, no. Here! Let uh, me go. No, you don't. Uh, well, oh. Kerrigan. A capture, eh? Uh. Dupre, come here. Those two men at the desk. They're watching me. I want to be arrested. I must be arrested. What is all this? This woman is known as our daughter. Wanted by the police. There are several questions she may be able to answer. Oh. Then I must ask you to come with me, mademoiselle. I won't unless you force me. No. Dupre, have those two men standing at the desk arrested. I'll be responsible. Uh, Captain Dupre, this lady is in your charge. Bring her upstairs. Oui, monsieur. Now, Dupre, examine the lobby, the smaller bedroom, and the bathroom. Peach and I will search the others. Oui, monsieur. Adata, I'm going to lock you in the end room. Just as soon as Dupre reports that it's a safe place. Yes, sir. Stay with her, Kerrigan. Come along, Petrie. I have run away, Bart, to you. I was followed, but they could do nothing while I was standing at the desk. Now they have seen me arrested, and if ever he gets me back, this may save me. Oh, he shan't get you back, Ardata. But you do not understand, Bart. Shall I never make you understand that unless we get away from Paris, nothing can save us? Nothing. Well, we didn't find a thing. Not a thing. Mr. Smith, you must leave here at once. I do not know if there is any place in the world where you can hide from them, but this place you must leave now. Our daughter, listen to me. Have you any knowledge whatever of the sea fan's plans for tonight? If I had, I could not tell you. But I do not know anything about these plans. As God is my witness, it is true. I only know that you are to die. How do you know that? I was ordered to leave this envelope at the desk and not allow myself to be recognized. I waited until I knew I had been recognized. Let me have that, please. Ah, final notice. Lower and raise the lights in your sitting room slowly twice to indicate that you are prepared to receive instructions. You have until midnight. President of the Council. Adata. Who is president of the council? Dr. Fu Manchu. But I thought he was to be replaced. He was replaced by Ming Toy. But Ming fell victim to the Green Death. And now the doctor is again the president. Monsieur Smith. Oh, yes, Dupre. The one at the end of the suite has been searched. I find nothing. Good. I have given orders to have the hotel surrounded. The adjoining suites are unoccupied, and the guests of the hotel are now being examined by my men. Oh, that's excellent. All right, Ardata. I'm going to lock you in that room. You're... You're not going to stay here, Mr. Smith. Oh, yes, I am. But you mustn't. Oh, please, Bart. There's nothing to be afraid of, our daughter. You heard that the hotel's surrounded. And... Oh, very well. There's nothing more I can do. It only lacks ten minutes to twelve o'clock, dear. We'll let you out right after the hour. Yes. Someone will let me out of that room. But I know that it won't be you. All right, Petrie. Pull the curtains across the windows. Then sit in that chair. Right, Nayland. You sit here, Kerrigan. Have your gun ready. What are you going to do, Smith? I'm going to search every inch of this room. What for? I don't know. But you remember the black streak that crashed through the window and went over the balcony in Pierre de Libre's room? That thing, or a similar thing, is here. Uh, five minutes to twelve, Nayland. Touch nothing. Leave the search to me. Just stand by. Mm -hmm. Nothing here. Now, let's see. 
Oh, Our daughter. I've got to... Oh, Go and pacify her, Kerrigan. We don't have her in here. I'm not going to leave this room. Let me out. Let me out. I shall go mad. Dupre. Oui, monsieur. Go to the other door and let the girl stay with you in the hall. On no account is she to enter this room. Oui, monsieur. Come on, dear. Let me with you. Well, if you're so sure, Nayland, that the danger is here, why should we stay? I can't explain just yet, Petrie, but... Smith. Smith. What? For heaven's sakes, don't move. Hmm? But look, up there under the cornice in the shadow. Good Lord. Two eyes, two fiery eyes. What is it, Smith? In heaven's name, what is it? Shoot, Kerrigan, shoot. <laughs> Petrie, Kerrigan, drop flat. The lights. Who turned the lights out? You, your flashlight. No lights, Dupre, and don't come in. Petrie, Kerrigan, get to the door. What's that burning smell, then? Smith, are you in there? Yes, we're coming out. What? What happened to the lights, Nayland? It's the big blackout, Petrie. Ordered by Delib to take place tonight. Whoever's in charge of the air defenses of Paris has received no orders to cancel it. That saved us. But my shot, Smith. I'm afraid you missed, Kerrigan. Oh, where's our daughter? Right here, Monsieur Kerrigan. She fainted when the shot came. Well, we've got to bring her to. Oh, uh, show a light now, Dupre. Oui, Monsieur. Here, Kerrigan, take this bottle. Yes. Let us smell it. Well, huh? that should bring her around. Yes. She's... Beginning to stir a little. Oh, she's opening her eyes. A daughter. A daughter, darling. It's me, Bart. What? Oh, what happened? Oh, Bart. Oh, Bart, are you safe? Of course, of course I'm safe, darling. Quiet, everybody. Switch off that flashlight, Dupre. There it is again. There. There, the eye. It's running away. Along the corridor. After it. Oh, don't go, Bart. Stay here with me. I've got to see what it is, our daughter. Wait here. Oh, no. No, I'm coming with you. Stop. I can't hear anything. Don't show a light. Don't show a light, Dupre, whatever you do. Here, Nathan. Look out! Shadow of Fu Manchu.